Welcome to Power Search. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a phased animation in Navisworks using a model from Revit. This animation begins by highlighting the elements to be demolished in red. As the sequence progresses, these elements gradually fade out, becoming transparent until they disappear completely. Once all demolished elements are gone, the newly proposed elements emerge in green. Starting in Revit, we begin with a comprehensive model that utilizes the phasing tool. This tool helps distinguish between existing elements, such as these fixtures, laid out from left to right. It also identifies demolished elements and defines the new layout where the fixtures are now arranged in a north-south configuration. With this setup complete in Revit, the next step is to export the model data into Navisworks. First, I create 3D views for each key phase, including a view that shows only the demolished elements. These views are managed using phase filters. If you want to learn more about phase filters, check out my video on the topic. The link is in the comments section. Since Navisworks only reads locked or saved 3D views, I ensure that the necessary views are locked. Then using the external tools found in the Add-ins tab, I export the views to a compatible Navisworks format. Once in Navisworks, I import the Revit data starting with the demolished elements. It's essential to stay organized, so I create folders representing each phased view in the project. Selecting elements can be done either on screen or via the selection tree, where elements are categorized by their Revit family. For instance, selecting the Furniture Systems category header selects all fixtures in the view. I use the Selection Sets tool in the Home tab to create and name sets accordingly. I then move them into their respective folders. Next, I import the new elements export, adding another view state to the project. As more view states are imported, it becomes harder to locate elements. So I use the Find Items tool to filter out Revit parameters, like the Phase Created parameter, to isolate and select the new items. With all the necessary selection sets created, I can now begin arranging the animation. Before starting, I've prepared a storyboard to guide me through the process. I switch to a perspective view to simulate the final result. Creating the animation should follow the following steps. I start by creating a new scene, naming it Demolition. I add a camera to control the view throughout the scene and save the initial viewpoint as start. I adjust the view to focus on the wall base on the left side of the model, which I'll demolish first.
and this becomes my second viewpoint. The saved viewpoints are located over here on the bottom right hand corner. Be sure to name these accordingly, maintaining an organized structure. Navisworks will stitch the frames in between each viewpoint together, creating a seamless animation. I then add the viewpoints to the animation and assign keyframes on the timeline. This is confirmed by a small icon that appears on the timeline. I'll then bump the timeline to the 5 second mark and lock in the second keyframe. Now I'll reset the timestamp back to zero and toggle the play button and play back the animated sequence. As explained earlier, Navisworks has filled in the transitions to create the seamless animation. I can now add the selections to the animation. From the saved sets on the left, I choose Wallbase 01 and then add this to the scene. By right clicking on the scene title and then from the drop down that appears, I choose Add Animation from Current Selection. I'll take the opportunity to rename this. Notice the wall bays are still selected in the animation. So I'll switch back to the camera and add the third view state and test how it will look. At this point, I'm focused on the wall base visibility as seen by the viewer. I think it looks okay, so now I'll focus on the element manipulation. At the 5 second mark, I want the wall base to change color, so I'll stamp the timeline at that frame. I'll follow this up with another stamp at the 6 and 7 second mark. Now I've got a cluster of stamps created for the wall base selection set that I can edit and manipulate to create the disappearing visual. This is quite straightforward. First, I edit the color to red to showcase the demolition. Red was chosen because it matches the demolition color used in the Revit documentation. I also toggle the transparency throughout the keyframes, slightly increasing their intensity at each keyframe. This gradual fading effect creates the visual of the wall base disappearing as they are demolished. And playing that back, this is what it looks like. Moving along, I'll add a fourth viewpoint to focus on the demolition of the rear wall base. I realize the external wall on the right of the model, which was hidden earlier, needs to be visible for the animation to make sense. I use the Unhide All option in the Home tab to reveal all elements, including the newly proposed ones. I can manage this in the selection tree. I'll globally turn off the demo and new exports. I'll also turn off the existing exports ceilings. Now I'm back at the original view, but with the right external wall visible. On the rear wall base, I add them to the animation sequence by selecting the corresponding selection set moving to the timeline and right clicking the scene title to add the current selection. Mirroring the process used for the left side base. I then adjust the timeline to extend this part of the animation, giving the rear base more time to fade out gradually. I 
I create additional keyframes to control the color and transparency of the rear wall base. I'll review the animation to ensure that it looks good. I'll stop the timeline and hit escape on the keyboard to remove the blue selection highlights. Refining the animation. As I reviewed the animation, I noticed that the wall base disappear too quickly. So I extend the timeline to 11 seconds to highlight this part of the demolition and adjust the transparency settings to ensure a smoother fade out. I then copy the keyframe from the 8 second mark and paste it at the 10 second mark. adjusting the transparency settings to ensure a smoother fade out. I repeat this process for the 9 second mark ensuring a consistent and gradual transition. With the demolition portion of the animation complete, I add the new elements. Using the same methods demonstrated earlier, I create selection sets for these elements. In the animation pane, you'll notice a lot more sets have been added. The transparency is adjusted in reverse, decreasing until the elements are fully visible. These are the new selection sets that have been added. Managing the selection sets through the different phases was the most challenging part of this project. Ideally, managing the view states in Revit before exporting would make the process smoother. However, I wanted to showcase how this can also be done in Navisworks. By following my storyboard, I can highlight the relevant elements and hide unnecessary categories in advance, ensuring a clean and clear animation. And here is the final result. If you like it, please let me know by leaving a comment.